Hello, kamusta? My name is Rando and welcome back to yet another Gunpla video review. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the real grade 1144 scale RX93 New 2 High New Gundam. Before we actually get into the model kit itself, let me give a quick shout out to Neil's Hobby Shop. BAM! Links in the description below, support their social media and give them a good review, a great review. These guys are amazing and they were the ones who provided me with this model kit so shout out to you guys, good job and without further ado, let's get to the model kit itself. I accidentally booked it. Probably one of the most highly anticipated releases of the year 2021, the real grade high nuke Gundam is one of the most awaited model kits by a lot of Gunpla builders. Of course, non-Gunpla builders also probably wanted to give it out a try. When you talk about Gunpla releases and it is a real grade model kit, a lot of fans get excited for new model kits that are in release. In the year 2022, Bandai is set to release the real grade God Gundam. Just like the real grade high new Gundam, the God Gundam is one of those model kits that are blessed with Bandai's wonderful engineering practices. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, the real grade high new Gundam is one of the few model kits that are also blessed with that wonderful Bandai engineering witchcraft and craftsmanship. Jokes on the witchcraft thingy though, please. Please, please don't torture me. And I am proud to say that I am one of the few Gunpla builders who actually uh, had the chance to own a real grade high new Gundam. So where does this model kit come from and what series does it belong? So let me give you a little bit of a um, background narration about this particular model kit or mobile suit for that matter. So as you can see the high new Gundam just like it's um, High grade counterpart or arch nemesis, the high grade Universal Century Nightingale. Both the Nightingale and the Hainu Gundam comes from the Gundam manga series uh, or manga novel Gundam Char's Counterattack Beltor Chica's Children, in which it is the alternate uh, version of Char's Counterattack. And this particular mobile suit is, of course, piloted by everyone's favorite protagonistic Gundam pilots. Amuro Ray. And yep, the model kit elaborates it in its tattoo. So before we take a look at the model kit, let's first take a look at its box. So as you can see right here, this is a very big real grade model kit box. Now if you see, comparing it to a very small real grade box, that is the Wing Gundam right here. Let me just... As you can see, the Wing Gundam's box is actually dwarfed. So this box is one of those fewer, bigger, uh, real grade boxes that you can get from this line of model kits. Because of the amount of runners that this guy comes with, it is expected to be this big of a box. So without further ado, let's take a look what's inside. I just broke it. Okay, so this is where I place the accessories, so don't mind that. So we have the manual right here, and this is one of the few things that I love about real grade model kits. Their manuals are actually a uh, booklet, uh, booklet kind of uh, manuals. They're not like the uh, ordinary high grade ones where you have to fold it out, which is a bit tedious when you're building. So it's actually pretty neat. And as you can see, for real grade model kit, this is the back part wherein you put the. Um, I think these are called foil stickers, if I'm correct. Or oh no no, not foil stickers, but decals. And as you can see. The High New Gundam comes with a decent amount of uh, decal stickers and I did not put all of it onto the model kit because it's gonna take a lot of time to put these on the model kit. So a few will do, you know. And as you can see right here, these are the amount of runners that the High New Gundam comes with. And as you can see, this is one of the most uh, remarkable runners that I've ever seen so far and it's probably one of my favorites because it is like a metallic silver paint finish so this is a very cool feature uh, this is a very cool set of runners that holds in a lot of pieces for the Hainu Gundam which are these metallic painted ones so 
we got two of these, and then two uh, white runners, so that's four runners so far. Five, six, okay, seven, eight, and as you can see right here, gold injected runners. Now, these are not the best in my opinion. It's not that much appealing a much better gold color will be a self-painted gold color if you use you know uh paints that are not made by bandai such as this yeah so how many runners that is so far so stopping from eight nine okay ten eleven 12, uh, 13, that is the clear runner for the beam blades, and then 14. So we have 14 runners in total, and it is a lot. Like, it's a lot of runners since it is a real great model kit with a lot of pieces and a lot of parts, so you expect it to be that big. So before I actually forget, I ruined my order on this, so before we get to the model kit, let's take a look what's outside the box. So as you can see, this is your standard, uh, this is the standard uh, look that you can get from a real great box. This is the, um, what do you call it? This is the finished product of the model kit with its face on close up. And then we have some brief description about the box itself. The real great is designed to recreate the real thing, meaning that real great model kits focus on a much more realistic uh, aesthetic as what I have said in my Tolgus review. Okay, so moving down from that, you can see this is a, this is not the 2017 or older kind of Bandai model kit since it has the light blue logo color. And then we got a uh, real grade, so some details about that, some little blurbs, and some parts that you should take note about in which we will be covering up later. Since this is a real grade model kit, it shows the amount of details and gimmicks that the model kit comes with after you build it. So this is the side, it says it is number 36, so this is the uh, uh, order number of the model kit which it comes in, so I think this is the number 36 real grade model kit, my camera went out of focus there for a bit. And then you see here the overall looks of the model kit once you finish it, so as you can see there's this blurb right here which says a little bit about the model kit, beautiful, beautiful. Um, picture that they used in promoting the product uh, in its finished version so this is a very beautiful uh, box it is big it is quite uh, thick and it is appealing so without further ado let's move on from the box to the model kit itself but of course being just uh, just like any other Gunpla model kits the real great Hainu Gundam comes with its own pros and cons and I will be inconsistently pointing them out throughout the whole video. But for now, let's talk about aesthetics. As you can see, the Hainu Gundam is indeed a very, very beautiful uh, real great model kit. And surprisingly enough, even though that um, I've never actually seen uh, or read Belter Chica's Children, from what I can tell, the Hainu Gundam captures the overall proportions of its original source material. It is a slim model kit, and at the same time, it is quite bulky, but it's not too much and it is not um, lacking. So what I'm trying to say here is, it is just small and bulky enough to give the mobile suit its right proportions translated from its original source material. And let me just say, those wings are beautiful. It is just eye-catching. Just like its original daddy, uh, the new Gundam, this particular Gundam also comes with the traditional and trademark fin funnels, but instead of having that asymmetric uh, one-wing fin funnel look, this model kit has a very consistent display of fin funnels, but there's still six. They were just, uh, let's say, evenly distributed to become, uh, to give the model kit itself a winged look. And as per real grade model kits, this guy has a lot of color separated details. 
Unfortunately, I do not have the original high grade Universal Century High New Gundam, but from what I can tell, the color separated pieces from this model kit is not that existent when it comes to its high grade Universal Century counterpart, and I guess that is a given since it's just a simple 1144 scale, but of course, this is a real grade. It is like a tiny, tiny master grade that has the same uh, aesthetics and gimmicks that a master grade has. So as I was saying, there's a lot of pros when it comes to a real grade model kit's um, aesthetics. But in the case of the Hainu Gundam, one of the few pros that I would like to point out is that it doesn't necessarily... Uh, overshadows the rest of your model kits unless it is a very simple uh, 1 1 4 2 4 scale or even a master grade for that matter. One of the few pros, it is simply an eye-catching model kit and as you can see the white color, the blue colors, the, even the gold colors and the uh, uh, not that noticeable silver colors gives this model kit uh, enough justice that it doesn't overshadow your other model kits in your collection. It doesn't make them look bad actually. Speaking of uh, putting this side by side with the rest of your collection, let me do a quick size uh, difference review. So here is a very standard super deformed SD Gundam Barbados. A very simple high grade universal century Zaku 1 sniper type. And as you can see, even with the simple looks, the high new Gundam looks good with a very simple model kit. It doesn't outshine it that much, well of course it still outshine it in a way but for me it's not that bad. A high grade Universal Century St. Andrew Stein and as you can see even if the St. Andrew Stein is a bigger model kit the High New Gundam still looks good beside it and they actually match pretty well. The real grade New Gundam and here's one of the few cons that some builders actually find with the uh, Hainu Gundam and uh, I believe it was that the Hainu Gundam was not as tall as the real grade new Gundam but for me they're the same size and I don't know what I did right or wrong but for me uh, they're in the same height so it's not that much of a con but yeah it's one of the few things that a lot of builders pointed out during its release that it is not as tall as its original Mecha Daddy, the new Gundam. Here he is next to the real great Sazabi and as, I, as you can see, even with the bulky mobile suit, this guy somehow stands out and doesn't overshadow the or other model kits, which is a good thing, in my opinion. And here he is next to its arch nemesis, the high grade Universal Century Nightingale. And of course, in terms of size and shelf presence, the Nightingale kind of takes the crown from this guy, but for me, the Hainu still stand out in its own special way. Oh, did I forget to mention? These two look great together. And it makes up for a very decent Beltor Chica's Children display, I suppose. One of the few things that a lot of people talk, talk about the uh, quote-unquote con about this model kit is its colors. Some people find that the High New Gundam is a little bit color inaccurate, comparing it to the Universal High Grade Universal Century counterpart and even the Verka counterpart, or probably the Master Grade one if they have that in the simple Master Grade model kit. The High New Gundam comes at a purple hue, but this guy they say somehow comes out at a blue. So I don't know which one is color inaccurate, but for me, it's fine since I barely know anything about Beltor Chica's children. And as for every real great model kits, these guys have um, a lot of panel lining opportunities and even painting opportunities. But since I don't have that much time and I'm too lazy to panel line this thing, the face is the only part that I panel line but it still stands out and the rest of the model kit is actually not panel lined. Even though with promising details and beautiful aesthetics, a real great model kit can still be improved with a little bit of panel lining and painting. So, Gunplay is freedom, do as you please, be careful with your tools and give your model kits that um, additional shelf presence. Speaking of real great aesthetics, 
real grades have that very special gimmick that comes with their model kits. Uh, if you pay close enough attention to the box of the model kit, it actually shows you that the model kit has a lot of parts that are actually movable and we're gonna be figuring out that. So let's do that now. And to make the next bit easier, I'm gonna be removing this guy's backpack and we're gonna be talking about one of the few cons about its backpack later on. And as you can see, without the backpack, this guy kind of slims down, but it's not too bad. After just a few minutes of trying to figure out this guy's gimmicks, this is what a real grade model kit can offer to a very standard Gunpla builder. There are a lot of moving parts that a real grade model kit can actually offer to a Gunpla builder who is looking for a very poseable and very expressive model kit. And as you can see, there are uh, moving parts on the shoulders, the arms, even the back. And this is just something else. It is not noticeable at first, but if you did take the time to figure out the model kit itself, there are a lot of armor pieces that actually move. And this is what I would like to call the one scene from the first Iron Man movie. Do check on control surfaces. As you wish. Yeah. We're through with that. So this is just the level of details that a real grade model kit comes with and it, it's, it is just very awesome that you can pull this off in a 1144 scale model kit. Hell, look at it with its wings. Big dick energy mode. Because of the overall size and sheer, well, looks of the wings, the model kit just elevates its aesthetics and its gimmicks a lot more. And speaking of gimmicks, Let's talk about this guy's accessories. Technically not gimmicks, but let's just call them accessories. I'm so stupid. And as for the standard loadout of the Hainu Gundam, it has a very decent amount of accessories, which are not too much and uh, not lacking. And of course, the model kit itself makes up for what it actually has. So as for the standard real grade model kit, the model kit itself comes with 7 pairs of hands, including the ones attached to his arms right now. So first, you got this, whoops, you got this very standard trigger finger. And then you get this right and left grabby hand, so that comes in pairs. And of course, a pair of widespread open hands for a more expressive uh, possibility for the model kit. And this is one of the most special features about these widespread open hands so as you can see right there as you can see right there there's this extra there's this part in the hand that it seems to be articulated that only moves up and moves down which gives the model kit so much expressive expressive uh, details when you use this for posing or even in your photography come on focus and I almost forgot to mention, even the trigger finger hand comes with that joint, I think. Does it come with that joint? I don't think so. I Yeah, that was my mistake. <laughs> I'm so stupid. And here's one of the pros that I can point out about this figure. You see, in most traditional uh, Gunpla model kits, switching the hands is... Switching the hands is a very, very... Um, tedious situation wherein the hand has a tendency to break if you push it in too hard or pull it in too hard because the pull cap will, or the joint socket was a bit too tight. Not in the case for the real grade Hainu Gundam because even though that this is a ball joint and that is your very traditional uh, Gunpla uh, ball socket, it slides in quite easy and it is not too loose nor is it too tight so it is just a perfect fit and hopefully bandai continues this kind of quality on their upcoming kits because it makes the hands much more fun to handle and pose and it doesn't actually scare the common uh, gunpla builder of breaking the uh hand joints the neighbor's dog is way too loud and i'm getting annoyed at, but god damn it and yes, believe me when I say this, a very tight hand joint has the ten tendency to break and I did break one of my 
model kit's hands, specifically the real grateful armor unicorn Gundam, but that video is for another day. Combine the hands with the with the model kit's extra points of articulation, and you will have a field day of having fun with this model kit's possibility. Aye, 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 aye. Now for the next accessory, let's talk about the model kit's beam rifle. And as you can see right here, this is a very standard looking real grade uh, beam rifle. And I believe this is not that different to the new Gundams. Only this particular beam rifle only has a few color separated pieces um, compared to the new Gundam. So kind of a very sim kind of a simple beam rifle i wish it has a lot more color separated pieces just as the new gundam has but not a deal breaker and then we have the bazooka now this is just as what the ordinary bazooka looks like on the new gundam and it actually has the extending gimmick just like the new gundam so again different colors and nothing that much that there is to it but this one doesn't come with the uh, red missiles as you would see on the new Gundam. This part is actually covered up, which is not a bad thing. So it separates it from the new Gundam. And we also have a beam saber. Now this model kit comes with two pairs of beam blades. And as you can see, this particular beam saber right here, let me just remove the beam from the handle. This one actually can be stored on the left forearm hold on this is a little bit difficult on camera so as you can see you just push down this part and then open this panel up and there's this little tab inside wherein you want this uh actually there's a little peg inside wherein you would want to fit the uh beam saber uh tab in so it just okay it tabs in just like that and it is a very very smooth tight and i haven't tried this but let's see if we can attach a beam saber to it yup that kind of works love that weapon storage gimmick by the way but that is not the only place wherein beam sabers are stored if we come to the wings of the gundam which is a little bit tedious to hold so let me just fix it like so there's these little uh space in, spaces in here wherein two additional beam sabers are actually stored Opening them is a little bit of a challenge. So what you want to do is you actually lift this. You lift this part just a little bit for your uh, fingernails to have or even a tool to have enough space to pull out. And then you just simply... So what I'm trying to point it out here is that you pull these out and then it reveals two beam sabers inside. Now the beam sa saber handles that are found inside these... Uh, armor pieces are just the same as the ones as the one that is stored in the new Gundam's forearm so yeah you get the point now since we're at the wings let's talk about the fin funnels now the high new Gundam comes with six fin funnels we're just gonna be taking out one right now since they have the same articulation and overall look so the way that these are stored inside the wings is just fairly simple there are these gray squares that you're gonna want to fit the fin funnels in this direction so as you can see the gray parts are facing inwards while the clean side is facing outwards so just simply pull them out and the way to transform these are really simple so first you're, you're gonna want to be careful about this because the plastic is quite thin so just simply fold them out and then you fold them back in to a degree that kind of looks like an activated new Gundam fin funnel. So simply get any effect parts that you can buy online or any hobby shops and then these fin funnels would look good on the kit. Unfortunately I don't have any of those so we're stuck with this but yeah they look cool. They look a little bit better than the new Gundam but of course it has it has its own charm as well and this thing has a lot of color separated pieces compared to the new Gundam's fin funnels but that video is for another day so yeah now let's talk about the final accessory which is the shield now this thing is very simple yet again compared to the new Gundam's uh, shield 
this has a lot of co color separated parts. Uh, this one, I, I, I'll just call this light blue for now. I forgot what color accent that is. Now we have blue, white, and then this part is also the same color as this. And then this is blue, this is blue, which is a very cool feature for the new Gundam, including this blue piece right here. That is also color separated. The back side, however, is gonna is your standard plain gray piece. But again, it's not that bad. It is still detailed as it is, and it is not that bad. And as you can see, if you want to attach this to the new Gundam itself, you simply just pose, uh, plug it in right there. So it just fits. It just fits. Hold on. <laughs> So as you can see, if you plug it in correctly, it fits with no problem and it is a very solid connection. One of the new Gundam's accessory is this stand adapter. Now this is very specific because you're gonna have to put it in its back. As you can see right here, the back part right here, you're gonna have to plug in the stand there and then you put the wings back in here and then you just plug this in in a 1144 scale stand. So now let's talk about articulation. The new Gundam's head can only is on a double ball, ball joint which can actually shift forward and back a little bit but not too much. It is on a ball joint so it can spin 360 degrees but unfortunately due to the design of the head and these collars on the chest it can only look left and right to that degree unless you kind of no there's no way of doing that you know fully looking left and right so you're just gonna have a limited um left and right look. Also a gimmick on the head that is on the new Gundam, this part right here can actually fold up just like so which gives the new Gundam more degree when it terms of looking up and that is pretty dis decent enough. Now the shoulders of the new Gundam can actually spin 360 degrees including the shoulder armor. The shoulder armor can move up and down just like so and unfortunately it doesn't open up just like the new Gundam which uh, opens up like so. I forgot if it can do that but yeah. The shoulder joints here are actually extendable as you can see it can move back that far and it can move in. There are these joints in the shoulders that allows for a more extending gimmick so you can get a lot of arm poseability. These biceps right here are on a double joint so this part spins the whole joint and then if you hold this part the elbow can also spin so which gives it more degree of rotation the elbow can do a double bend the wrists are on a ball joint and if you consider it the open hands have a bending point that can go to that degree of bending so as you can see it can go 90 degrees so that is a good thing there's also this neat little gimmick on the right hand in which the wrist can the joint or the peg wherein the wrists are plugged in can actually bend in and as you can see the gun on the right arm can actually pull out now the chest armor can actually open up so you're gonna have to be a little careful on this so it can open up just like so and which reveals more mechanical detail inside. A very uh, subtle cockpit detail actually. Oh yeah, the chest armor's door can actually slide open just like so and if you want to close it, it's a little bit difficult. So the point is the door can slide up and down. Now this is one of the cooler aspects about the Hainu Gundam. It carries on the extending uh, torso joint that the new Gundam comes with so it can do a very far uh, arcing back and it can crunch in that deep so that is a very cool feature the waist joint can uh, swivel from right to left to that degree it's because of these side skirts they get limited but it's a very decent waist swivel front skirts can move up that far the side skirts can move up that far and can actually do a swivel a little bit but not too much. There's this little piece here that slides down in which you can actually store the rifle. So the way the rifle is stored by the way is you pull out this little peg and you just simply plug it in and it stays in 
nice and firm. Back skirts can move up that far. And for the front skirts and side skirts, these are actually on a ball joint. I had to double check that and they're in a hinge. So I'm trying to figure out this one. So as you can see, the side skirts can actually pull out to give clearance for the leg pose ability. And I'll be showing that to you right now. And as you can see, the leg has more room to do a front kick. The waist here has a joint that allows the model kit to go side to side but I'm not gonna force it because I feel mine is gonna break. You can somehow kind of uh, unzip his pants but yeah you get the point. Now as for the leg, it can kick that far and it can swing back that far. And if you actually untab this piece underneath the crutch right here you can adjust the legs uh, you can adjust the legs as you can see there's this it can swing just like that if you unlock this and if you want to keep that in place you simply just pop this in just like just like so I can do it the legs can also do a full well it cannot actually split that much since there are many armor pieces that hinder it from splitting up fully. The leg can also rotate just like so. And as you can see right here, if I bend the knee, armor pieces actually move, which is a very, very neat feature for a lot of real grade model kits. Armor separating pieces galore. I almost quite forgot the knee has a lot of bending points. So as you can see, one and then two there's a lot of bending points that is the point <laughs> for the foot the foot's toe can actually bend in and the back I okay as you can see the foot is actually on a ball joint that allows it to uh, rotate just like so and it bends in that deep and it re and as you can see there's the joints that hold the ankle and foot together and yeah there we go the foot has two uh, bending points one in the toe and one on the main sole. Let's not forget about this guy's wings. The propellant tanks are on a ball joint that can swivel around and even rotate. The wings can move out and in just like so. The fin funnels are attached to these uh, pegs right here or uh, blocks that can swing in just like so and as you can see if you move this part at the, the end, the armor piece actually moves along with it. Just like the, uh, the armor pieces that it can be found on the new, high new Gundam. So, move, so they have the same degree of articulation. And then this right here can also move up and down just like so. Now as for this beak part here. It can move down and up just like so. This part on the back can actually uh, open and close. This part right here can... Whoops. <laughs> As I was saying, this part right here can extend and uh, go back in. So a little bit difficult, but no, not a problem in this. Little dingly, this does a little dingle right there. There is also this little tab on the back that holds that can hold the bazooka just like so the excessive amount of articulation that a real grade model kit is enough to uh, give you a lot of posing options and it is not disappointing although you have to be very careful because sometimes the plastic on a real grade model kit is actually very fragile and, and if you're one of those few builders who actually enjoy posing your model kits this model kit right here will not be a disappointment Actually, one of the few cons that I can talk about this kit is that it's back heavy. And as you can see, without the propellant tanks, this guy would just give in. And as you can see, his feet are not actually flat on the ground. The front bit kind of points up a little bit, so you're going to need the stand for this guy. It's not a JoJo reference. Shut up. So with an excessive amount of articulation, simple yet beautiful accessories and a lot of details the real grade Hainu Gundam is one of those real grade model kits that you must get if you're a big fan of the original high grade universe high grade universal century 
Universal Century Timeline. What rating would I give this model kit? Honestly, it would be a 9.5 out of 10. Despite being a beautiful and very, very awesome real grade model kit, it still has some imperfections that leaves a lot to desire. But again, it doesn't mean that the overall kit is bad. So without further ado, my name is Rando. Click the uh, hit the like button if you did enjoy the video and click the notification bell for more upcoming videos like this soon. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel and share it to your friends, your family, or even your coworker for some low quality Gunpla reviews. So again, my name is Rando. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Paalam!